principle that is key to teaching, both offline and online, is empathy. When you're online, some emotions are heightened and others are dampened compared to the normal physical world. So it's really important to try and be empathetic in our approach to online teaching. For our students, they're probably used to speaking to friends and family members online, but when they're confronted with a teacher through a screen, that could be really out of their comfort zone. Try and think and feel as the student does. How will they be feeling before, during and after a lesson? One of the biggest challenges to getting a sense of how someone is feeling through a screen is the fact that you're missing a lot of micro information that you'd usually have to build a holistic sense of what's going on in the learning environment. It's caused by a whole multitude of things. Some are technological, like variable sound and camera quality, or lighting. For example, you're usually only getting a head and shoulder view of your students, as opposed to a full complement of body language. Something that's often forgotten about, but is equally really important in the online world, is personal space. Just where is somebody's personal space when you're looking at them through a camera? It can be difficult to recreate the normal feelings that you'd usually have in your physical classroom. Online, it is much easier for students to switch off, it's easier for them to get bored, and it is way easier for them to get distracted. But if you have what's likely going through their mind and how they're feeling at the core of your delivery, you'll be going a long way towards recreating that face-to-face -face feeling. And sometimes, with technology on your side, it can actually be even better. Regular communication is actually one of the most simple and effective tools that we can use to encourage and motivate and inspire our students to learn. Actively encourage your students to open discussions with you and each other when they can. Having a regular form of communication is really useful for even just simple things like if you've seen something of interest on the TV or on the news and you want to share that with your students or even if you're going to be late to a lesson you can let them know instead of having them waiting there with a blank screen. It can be really hard to get your personality to flourish in the online classroom. So here are some ways that you can communicate well with your students during lessons to really allow your personality to shine and to really engage your students. First of all, facial expressions. <laughs> um, let's think again. And a nod of the head. Strong. No. <laughs> facial expressions can really, really help in engaging your students and providing some feedback whether it's an eyebrow raise to try and make your students think again or a smile and a nod of the head to let them know that they've got the right answer anything it all blends together to try and recreate that kind of face-to-face -face feeling that you'd have in a physical classroom another form of communication that you can use is eye contact how am i doing you might be asking or wondering how do i establish eye contact through a screen well the answer is simple look at the camera lens. Actually, it's not that simple. It's really easy to fall into the trap because we're so used to looking at faces when we talk to someone and not camera lenses. <laughs> but looking directly into the camera lens actually gives the impression that we are looking directly at our students and therefore it gives the impression that we are present, we are focused and we are actively engaged and it goes a long way towards recreating the kind of eye contact we would in our physical classrooms. Do try and look at the camera lens every now and again for around three to five seconds if you can. Do so especially when you're actively addressing your students or when you're listening to them give you an answer. the right content but plan to use it flexibly to get the best performance out of you as a teacher and your students. Choose content that fits the students needs. Now you would do this offline I am sure but online it is really important that you consider the students needs not only academically but also technologically. Try to be empathetic when you're planning and bear in mind the resources that your student has access to at home and how they might react to the content that you're creating. 
Create a menu of content that would help you to differentiate based on ability, but also the softer side of learning, things like creativity and motivation. You should always aim to create differentiated tasks. Again, you probably do this offline too, but have a kind of menu of tasks that you can deep in and out of in your lessons. When you're creating a question or some content, always try and have something that makes it a little bit harder and something that makes it a little bit easier at your fingertips. Something else that really helps with planning your lessons is prior assessment. Now, you might be really lucky and you might have taught your students before, but if you don't know your students before your first online lesson, it can be useful to try and send them a task in advance or some questions to try and gauge what they already know. If this isn't available, then use your first lesson to gauge what kind of level your students are. But not only that, gauge things about them that will help you understand how they're going to work in this context with an online teacher. So how creative are they? How capable of independent learning are they? How teachable are they? How coachable are they? These are the kinds of things that will really help you to find out how and where to pitch your lessons. Maintaining student engagement is much harder online than what it is offline. Trust me. <laughs> Students are quite often used to the pace of an offline lesson, but when they're online, their brains might automatically default to expect instant gratification or you know they might be distracted by any push notifications that pop up on the screen mid-lesson um, it's just really easy for them to get distracted so ensure that you plan a variety of tasks for each lesson and chunk your time accordingly to ensure that students remain stimulated throughout the entire lesson I don't often get through everything I plan in an, for an online lesson but I use this to my advantage and I often set some tasks for homework or I use them as a starter task in the next lesson. Once you've planned the main content of the lesson, plan some more and what I mean by this is something at your fingertips that you know you can use to get them actively engaging with the lesson again instead of just passively absorbing. Plan some extra escape tasks, tasks that you know you can use to rein your students back in if they do get distracted. Whether that's a sing-along to Baby Shark. In my personal experience, I find you can never plan too much. Everything you plan will become useful at some point when it's needed. But it does get easier as you get to know your students and what they like, what they don't like, what their motivations are, and especially what their aspirations are. might call it assessment for learning or formative assessment whatever it is you call it it's vital for students it's vital to get them engaged and to keep them moving forward whether you're online or not but what you're ideally looking for with online lessons is a really healthy mix of tasks and assessments with prompt feedback being an important bedrock the feedback that students get fuel the next part of their learning especially since online teaching relies so much on students being able to work independently. If you're teaching several lessons over a period of time, it's really useful to create student logs or class lists, somewhere where you can track progress, exam marks, likes, dislikes, aspirations, just little chunks of information about your students. It will help you to get to know them a lot better and it will help you to track their progress. It's also really useful as it helps you learn students' names. And this is something that I'm famously not very good at. <laughs> Another way you might wanna progress check in your lessons or provide prompt feedback in your lessons is by using a star chart or something similar. Star charts can be motivational for students of all ages. Trust me, adults, children, everybody loves a star chart. <laughs> and whilst the intrinsic reward of learning is our golden goal, it really doesn't hurt to give them an extra little nudge along the way, an extra little something something in your lessons to keep your students motivated. So don't shy away from the kinds of things you would use offline just because you've got a screen in front of you. online classroom might initially seem really limited compared to its physical counterpart but at the moment there are so many options out there for delivering online lessons. Get to know the different layouts and tools 
and functions of the technology that you'll be using before your first lesson with a student. Maybe have a test run with a student so that they can have a play around too. Troubleshoot your technology before the lesson to avoid any unwanted technological issues during the lesson. Just make sure that you're familiar with what your technology has to offer, the different tools that you will need to deliver your online lessons successfully. Life is better when you're wearing a smile, right? And if you're having fun and you're smiling, you're probably gonna make them have fun and them smile as well.